welcome back to Book Club, another episode of Book Club, and this time we are doing the third Horus Heresy novel. Gal Galaxy in Galaxy in Gal Galaxy in oh, Flames. Galaxy in Flames. Galaxy in Flames. <laughs> yes. Galaxy on Flambe by Ben Counter. Uh, we'll get to him in a minute. Yes, welcome to the podcast. The um, the but I keep calling it a podcast now. It is still a YouTube channel. Yes, it haven't is. actually uploaded anything to a podcast yet. But, but we're gonna. In theory, that'd be the case. So welcome if you are listening or watching our faces on on the interwebs. Um, I'm Ian, and this is Mira. Hello. And we read Warhammer books and then are surprised that they have war in. That's usually how this works. <laughs> That's what I do. But we yeah. spend a lot of time together in the Black Library. Yeah, we do. We spend a lot of time in the Black Library, which is a real place in the Warhammer universe. No Yeah, way. I know. I just realised we never discussed that. What? That's what? real. The Black Library is what? named after a thing from the background. What book? It's in loads of books. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and it doesn't feature any of these ones. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, what we do is we read Warhammer novels and uh, then we uh, talk about them. And then we ask questions about about them I and mean, sometimes you interview the people who wrote them that's the thing you do a yeah. lot um and also there's a patreon where people suggest books that we're going to read next yeah. they vote on them and also they give us questions to answer mm -hmm. about them so if you want to be involved all the stuff's in the thing below including links to the patreon to ask those questions to mira's patreon yay and to your channel where you interview the authors of these books yeah, yeah. which brings us on to the first point we are going to talk about yeah. about galaxy and flames absolute disaster Ben Counter hates you. <laughs> that's that's, that's so that's so Buzzfeedy. If we were Buzzfeed, yeah. that would be the title of the you video. You won't believe how much Ben Counter hates Mira. So, <laughs> yeah, and one of us has had an affair, so we've Num stopped being the try number guys. Number four will no. shock you. Um, yeah, number four will shock you. Um, yeah, so I've been really lucky with my uh, my forays in Warhammer, and you know, quite often I'll just ask if if someone will come on my channel and discuss the book. I'm really passionate about learning, you know, about the creativity and how it, how things get written, basically. Um, but I've asked Ben thrice. That's and the I, maximum number of times. That's the maximum number ask. of times. Yeah. Really, you should only ask once. Yeah. It's kind of rude to keep going. But you know that a lot of um, Games Workshop authors not only are incredibly busy because they're completely multi-talented humans working on a billion different projects, but also many of them are not allowed to talk about... No, they might actually be fed into the model grinder if they talk about their book. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Well, you know, also uh, some authors are don't want to be interviewed. They'd like to keep their private yeah. life private and let the words do the talking. So I decided instead of doing an author interview, I will probably just chat to a few of my friends and get their impressions. Which um, is what we're doing now. Yeah, but he's my best friend, my so, best Warhammer friend. That's qualified best Warhammer friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, Mira, um, so this is a, yeah, this is a full on book. Um, yeah. Why don't you give us your action movie summary of the book I'm going to continue through this podcast to refer to as Galaxy, Galaxy in, in Flames. Flames. Okay. <laughs> Just to warn you, I cried the last time I spoke about this yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to try not to. In a world <laughs> where everybody warned me terrible things would happen, <laughs> terrible things happen. Horace is a terrible bastard. Not content with just splitting from people who don't agree with him, he must kill them all. The characters we have come to love mostly perish, but there is some small hope as a small band of loyalists have escaped into the eternal darkness of the galaxy. Angron is angry. Full Grim flip-flops and Erebus may not be a Primarch, but is the biggest bastard of the lot. The Grim Dark is truly dark. The end. Is there a lot of Erebus being a bastard in this? It's his fault. Okay, it's all his fault. This whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It, this is full on. This is kind of... It's an interesting one, right? A bit of a spoiler. That This is kind of... Of the opening three, this is like the final one. The fourth book is weird. Okay. Right? Because the fourth book's Flight of the Eisenstein... And mostly it's this from the other point of view. Okay. Yeah, so so the, the interesting thing is that this sets up an awful lot of the next book. If Flight of the Eisenstein makes me feel sympathetic to Horace, I will jump off a car park. <laughs> I cannot which, like which is great because two books ago you were like Horace is great what do you mean he thought he was bad I can't bad? handle the emotional whiplash <laughs> so, so yeah I mean it's it's everyone dies people are turned into soup um, oh. yeah yeah um, and you get to read about it all happening again in the next one because it's it's told from a different point of view um, at the same just the same time period same time period yeah so it's this again 
Did you? So this does a lot of work, not only filling, progressing the last two books. I think this is the least standalone of these books. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. It, it's basically an act three. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, did you prefer this or Flight of the Einstein? I kind of prefer this. Okay. But we'll get we'll do we'll do Eisenstein next, so we'll see what you yeah, think. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we'll get to that when we get to Eisenstein because um, yeah. But anyway, we're in Galaxy and Flames, um, and and yeah, lots happened. So it's this kind of has a big line. The book is split into three parts, um, kind of quite well. The the third part is very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we start with um, a, a Act One, which which has been named here, and it's very present. It's been named Long Knives, is the first part yeah, of this book, yeah, yeah. which is obviously a reference to the Night of the Long Knives. So, you know, wonder what's going to happen in this. And the Night of the Long Knives is was in... a, re a revolution in Russia. No, that's a different thing. The Night of the Long Knives was when the Nazis were coming to power. Yeah. It was, it was the bit where they were like, yeah, just think I've got almost all the power now, now. Kill everyone who disagrees with us, politically. <sighs> And just cement your power by killing all your political rivals. Yeah. Uh, so that's what, and apparently, up to like probably more than a hundred people were killed, mm. uh, because in order for Hitler to just get rid of anyone who disagreed, just at the point where it was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I think I'm in charge. Just kill all those people now, I'm in charge. Um, so yeah, that's what's going to happen in Act One. Um, we get a bit of an update on everyone. Um, we see Kyral Sinderman and mm. the gang. Um, there, he's now a big follower of Keeler. If you remember in the last yeah. book, Keeler demoned off a demon and is in a coma now. Yeah. Um, uh, so we see that, and then we ri we meet Horus again, and th now he's bad. Horus has now fallen to chaos, and he's bad now. He is skeletal. He is proper <laughs> skeletal. He really is. He's like yeah. horrible. I mean, it, it, you you lose any. You know who you thought he was. Yeah. Post the, you know, post Davin and the Ser Temple of Serpents. Mm -hmm. He's just a bad dude now. He's a bad dude. He's now theatrically villainous. Yeah. He's but like a moustache twirling villain by this point. Yeah, but he's so sadistic. Yeah. As well. He um he interviews. He's with Malakurst, his buddy, and he interviews Ing Mei Singh, who is the astropath who was there with the demon attack. Um. Yeah. And she sends like a little psychic message to Sinderman to get Keela away and then yeah. Horus kills her. Yeah. So Horus kills Ingwe Singh and he's gonna go and kill Keela um because all these people are against him or whatever. Well, yeah, he's, he's figuring heard, out what's going on. He's heard about the religion and yeah. Keela is representing the Emperor. And yeah. there's rumors going around that she has special powers. So yeah. yeah. So he's like kill that. So uh Ingwe Singh before she dies gets a message off to uh Sinderman. He gets Kassar and Arukan from the uh big from Titan, Titan. DSERI. Uh, the angry god um, <laughs> to um, uh, to help. Uh, as always, Kassar is totally up for that. Yeah. And Arakan's like, oh, I'm going to be dragged along. Yeah. You shouldn't be so religious, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and all this. Um, and they come and rescue Keela from being killed by Magard. Which is amazing because part of their rescue, uh, Keela kind of comes back out of her coma. Yeah. And they have like a bullet time moment. Yeah, they do. Where, yeah. Yeah, where they're firing and you think, oh, no, they're all going to die. And she manages to slow down the bullets and they make their escape. Yeah. And that's all like happens quite early in. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a bit of that. Also, uh, in Act 1, there's a war happening. Yeah, so as I think, usual. I think at the end of the last book, we said something like, um, uh, now we'll go to the next location, yeah, Istvan. Yeah. Um, and we're in Istvan. So there's a big war in Istvan. There's a rebellion in Istvan. And this rebellion has taken the form of these things called war singers, which are like mm. magic people. Very cool. Again, the, the, there was an imperial commander, a bit yeah. like on Davin. There's an imperial commander. He sided mm. with the war singers and learned war songs. Mm. Um, and uh, and it's all magic, and they're all fighting for the war singers. And they have glass armor. <laughs> they have glass armor, yeah. Very cool. Just like in first and only yeah. the other thing we've recorded. Um, <laughs> so we see we actually we don't see Loken very much. No. We see Tarvit and Eidolon. Mm. And uh, Tarvit and Eidolon. So, uh, they're both uh, emperor's children. Yep, and they uh, fight a war singer. Um, they see the first person who goes up to fight the war singer is a guy called Nathaniel Garrow of the Death Guard. Okay, you're who saying we met that as... in the last book briefly, yeah. yeah, and he will be the main character of the next book. Death Death Guard. It's yeah. not a good name, is Death it? Death Guard are like the um, uh, if like Tarvits and I Empress Children are the posh ones, yeah, and Sons of Horus are the jokey ones, yeah. and World Eaters are the mad ones, yeah. the berserker ones. Death Guard are like the 
grumpy, <laughs> we trudge through the mud, we're never going to get hurt, we don't yeah. you know this fancy stuff sort of ones. They're the ones that are crazy for like, you know, we talk about it all the time, they're yellow and black tape. Yeah, that's the Iron Warriors. Iron Warriors. Yeah, okay, they're no. also grumpy. They're so, different sorts of grumpy though. The Iron Warriors are kind of like angry teenagers, whereas the Death Guard are like, <laughs> like um, the Death Guard are basically like Northerners. <laughs> God, yeah, you that, like, that's true because actually in the fluff they're from the north of Albia, which is in, meant to be where. England, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's true. But there's this whole idea that they're like, we don't care. Yep, doesn't matter. A bit, a bit of toxic rain. We don't give a shit. When I was a kid, we had toxic rain and, and all the time. Like it's it's the Monty Python Yorkshireman sketch. So what colour armour are they? They're um, bone with green trim. Okay, that sounds tricky to paint. Yeah, it's, it's actually mm. the nice thing about them is because because they're all about like we don't care, we don't need to paint our armor. We we had worse weather than this where we grew yeah, up. Yeah. We don't need this. <laughs> we'll just fight in a toxic swamp. We don't care. Um, uh, it means that they're really weathered. The armor's really dirty. Oh, yeah, perfect, yeah. great. Um, but yeah, so they're they're the sort of like gruff. Yeah, I yeah. don't care. Oh, we're we're so tough sort of people. Yeah. Uh, their leader is the Grim Reaper, who likes breathing in poisons. Yeah. Um, Who so yeah. Um, and yeah. So that's we meet Gathat Garrow, the Death Guard. Doesn't kill the War Singer. He gets hurt. Yeah. Um, Tarvitz and Eidolon. Tarvitz tries. Then Eidolon takes over. And Eidolon kills the War Singer by yelling at her. Yes, which I thought was harking back to Eisenhorn. Um, and the, do you remember you? They were. There was this. Uh, they were all trying to get this voice of death. Oh, do you remember? There yeah, was... no, Anuncia. Anuncia. Yeah. I, so Anuncia I was does like... come into the heresy, but not for a while. I was yeah. so excited because I thought, this is Anuncia. It's not it's Anuncia. Not. It's not. It's, uh, it's what well, we find out very quickly. Yeah. It's like the last thing that happens in this act, in the big setup, is that Eidolon's then like, right, Tarvitz, you've seen my crazy voice weapon. Yeah. Why don't I take you to my mate, Apothecary Fabius? In a secret lab. In a secret lab in our ship, who's been doing secret experiments on, on... on the Emperor's children to yeah. make us more perfect, right? Yeah, okay, they're achieving perfection through mutilation and, yeah. and power-ups, you yeah. know? So, it's like the Kardashians gone mad. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly like the yeah. Kardashians. And uh, Tarvitz is like, nah. Yes. Nah, I don't want that. No, Tarvitz is like, how could we improve upon the Emperor's, you know, seeds or whatever it is? <laughs> the Emperor made us in his image. We shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Which is a bad move. It's a bad move. I mean, because then there's a, a target move, on Tarvitz. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, basically. yeah. That means that Tarvitz is like, Eidolon's like, well, you don't want to be in our posh offices with massive throats, gang. No. And, uh, we should and say at this point, in the first two books, they introduce the Lodge. They do, yeah. And yeah. the Lodge is this kind of undercover thing where different chapters meet and mingle. Yeah. And they, it's like a secret thing, which you're not supposed to have. And it you, you discover that all this kind of machination and movement has been happening. The Lodge In just, the Lodges. The Lodge is so strong that they're completely prepared for what Horace is planning. And who introduced the Lodges to the Legions? Erebus. Erebus and his dad, Lorgar, who we haven't <laughs> met yet. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of Act 1. We set everyone up. Yeah. Uh, they kill, They kill. Um, at the end of the last book, they killed like Vivar and they killed Varvarus and mm. they've kind of done all their killing of people who might oppose them. Horace is in charge now. Um, and they're now attacking Isfahan. So then we get to this main assault on Isfahan. It's actually the last thing we see in the first act, but still. The next thing is the attack on Isfahan 3 against the war singers of Isfahan, yeah. right? And and one of the weird things that everyone finds out right at the start, and everyone's talking about it, is that the three, the four legions attacking, the Sons of Horus, Death Guard, Emperor's Children, and World Eaters, mm. and their dads, Horus, Mortarion, <laughs> Fulgrim, Yay. and Dangron, um, they uh, the the units that get assigned to go down there aren't assigned normally. Where it's like, no. oh, the the second and third company will attack. Yeah. It's like Horus and his lead, his fellow Primarchs have picked out exactly which squads yeah. and leaders will go down there individually. Like yeah. you're going to go and you're not, not by company or anything. They're not sending the company. They're like that squad's going to go, that one isn't, which is weird. And everyone talks about it being weird yeah and then they were like oh well how, how do we know what the plan is we'll do we'll follow our orders it's very portentous yeah and and everyone ends up going down so uh tarvitz doesn't go down no well uh, he kind of talks his way out yeah of he down. sort of he thinks this is a bit weird so he sort of talks his way out of it and he ends up offering to take on some duties on a ship mm. uh because the previous duty officer got hurt yeah um Loken and torgadon get sent down yeah um, Garrow doesn't get sent down he's too hurt and there's a, a guy called Erlen of the World Eaters who gets sent down mm. 
And they all get sent down. Um, and Imagine while being everyone's... picked for the worst football team yeah. ever. <laughs> like in PE, they were like, oh, you. And you're like, oh, I don't normally get to play in first team. Yeah. Oh, wicked. And then go down to the planet. Yeah, and guess what? I will get to that in a minute. So what happens <laughs> is we'll find out because what happens is Tarvitz goes, he's now like in, in command of this ship. Yeah. Well, he's like on the ship. Um, uh, Eidolon's on it, I think, as well. And Tarvitz is like taking the role of an officer who couldn't yeah, be yeah, next yeah. to her. Um, uh, and he goes for a wander down the ship. So he's having a little wander down the ship and he meets a guy I have called Crewman Exposition, <laughs> whose job, I believe, is to go... Oh yeah, hi Tarvitz. Yeah, obviously this, these are the virus bombs we're loading into the guns. It's for the massive betrayal we're planning. He basically says that. No, That's... but didn't he recognise the ordinance? He yeah, he did, he did. He recognised the look. He was like, whoa, those are the virus bombs. Yeah, but he does a, doesn't he do a thing where he sort of walks onto the flight deck and he's like, hello, I'm a captain, what's happening here? And the crew yeah, yeah, are like, yeah. obviously it's for the betrayal, sir. Yeah, he blags them. Yeah, um, uh, and so he realises the whole thing. He realises that the, these units have been handpicked because they're the ones that Horus and the commanders reckon would stay loyal. Yeah. Um, and so they've all been sent down and they're all going to get bombed to fuck on the planet so what he does is he steals a ship he does he tries to save his and he friends. goes down to warn them and, and Eidolon's like right shoot him down and event, and what he does is he radios his mate Garrow, Garrow of the Eisenstein says listen mate some bad some stuff bad going down happening. <laughs> and Garrow's, Garrow's a bit like ooh do I help or not <laughs> and eventually he, he, does, he like kills the fighters and makes it look like he killed Tarvis. Yeah, but that that's what I love about this book. There's a lot of moments where you think, oh my God, they're about to be shot. Or, oh mm. my God, will they help or won't they help? And then it cuts to and you're like, oh yeah. no, we're going to get back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's handled. There's a bit on that where it's like, Garrow thought about doing it. Yeah. Cut to the planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're like, ah. Um, yeah, so uh, it's it's very cinematic this this sort of the way it cuts in this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go totally. down to the planet. We find that you know all the Lo Loken Torgadon Lucius is on the planet. Lucius is having the time of his yeah. life. He kills the head war singer Vardas Prahl, the yeah. old Imperial governor. Um, but Half basically, apart from that, it's all going pretty badly. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, not going well. The other thing I should say is the planet is uh, a completely beautiful planet full of these sculptured temples and very religious. Even the, the way you die is you get sung at. And I thought it was really, it was a very beautiful <laughs> illustration of how, you know, space marines do not care. They're going to just completely level this planet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. The juxtaposition is quite brutal. So it doesn't go, it's not going that well. And no. then it decides to get worse because there is a virus bombing. Which is... Um, which is beautifully described. <sighs> what happens is the life eater virus is released, which basically turns people to soup. And it's described how quickly you breathe it in and then all your, everything. everything just turns into slurry and people are like puddles inside their armour. And... Um, all their skin just blobs away. All the people on the planet, not just space marines, not just the fighters. Yeah, everybody. everybody. Everything living. Vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Everything. It's an Fruit. E ecological um, sludge bomb. Animals. Yeah. More vegetables. Um, they just, yeah, it just turns into sludge. Yeah. And immediately breaks down all the bonds and moves on. Um, now, Tarvitz got there and told them all to get into cover. So some people managed to get into yeah. some cover. But mostly, everyone souped. Yeah. And then there's a second stage, which is all this supening, releases all this gases into the atmosphere. Yeah. So then they shoot it with a las gun and... Uh, atmosphere explodes. The atmosphere explodes. And that burns for, yeah. you know... In a raging firestorm, yeah. squirt scours the planet clean the knife. And this is basically the first time we see Exterminatus. This is how it works. I didn't there are, know that. There are a number of ways of doing Exterminatus, I thought exter but this is Exterminatus. I thought Exterminatus was the act of just blowing it up completely. No, no, usually they don't blow planets up. Usually they do this, where they turn them into rocks, okay. and then they're still usable again. Ugh. You could then re-terraform them or mine okay. them or something. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it it um, they completely scour it clean of life. Everyone dies. The DS right is down there, and mm. it, it has this weird moment where... um. They, they, the princeps obviously knows what's going on, orders them to stop, power down and close every hatch. Yeah. And and eventually ty, um, what happens is Kassar rebels and Arakan shoots him. Mm, that's so sad. Because Arakan wants command of a titan. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? You, Who doesn't? Oh, <laughs> you shoot your mate. Shoot your, shoot your crazy <laughs> religious mate. Yeah, so that happens. That was so um, heartbreaking. Yeah. I so this all happens 
Yeah, it's horrific. And then um, what happens next? Horus is like, do you want to see it on telly? Oh, this is And so awful. Horus then invites all the oh. remembrances on the vengeful spirit to come. It's a bit, it's a this bit is, horrific. This, it's like, it's like needless. This is the most gratuitous thing. <laughs> yeah. I've Horus read a lot of gratuitous does. things. Horus does not need to do this. This is the most gratuitous thing I've read in 19 books <laughs> in the Black Library. <laughs> Horus is like, ha ha. Yeah. Come and see what war really is. And then shows oh. them the virus bombing like 15 minutes later. Um, Mercedes and Euphrates Healer and Cinderman go. But they know it's a trap. And at some point, Euphrates turns around to cruise. I act on Quaru's cruise. I can't, someone else told me it was pronounced differently. But okay. I'm fucking we, know, we don't know pronunciation. Uh, listen to the books. Um, <laughs> it, oh, it was like Yakton. Okay, Yakton yeah, cruise. Yakton yeah, it's like, I act on. But I quite like it. It's like, it's, it sounds older if it's like, I act on. Yeah. It's like Obadiah. It's got too many <laughs> syllables, right? So you stick to I act on. Uh, yacked on cruise. Um, anyway, uh, um, what had happened is at some points, Loken before he went down was like, this looks dodgy. Look, mm. can you look out for my mate Keeler in a, in a coma over there? Yeah. And Cruz was like, I give you my word, no harm will come to them or something like that. Yeah. And that randomly, Miss Hadley then turns to Cruz just before everyone's shot to death by Horus for being a remembrancer and goes... We're friends of Loken. Yeah, this is the and time. Now is the time. And Cruz just hustles them out of the room. Thank God. Um, so Horus then kills all the remembrances. And Cruz kills Maggard. Yeah. To get to a thunder steals the Thunderhawk again and also goes to the Eisenstein. Yeah. Because Mercedes, uh, sorry, Euphrates like, ooh, spooky. Hence the next book being called The Flight like, of the, the, the Eisenstein. Eisenstein. So everyone's on the Eisenstein. We've all set this up. It's fully set up the <laughs> Eisenstein now. The Eisenstein, very, very important. Oh, mate. Like, I. And everyone's dead. I, but are they? But why? <laughs> what is the point? I, can, gotta, I can, get. You I get, get rid of all the people who might be against you. I get. With your long you, knives. You can be angry with journalists. There are a lot of bad ones out there that do phone <laughs> hacking. But there is no point to have them up there show them to, if just to kill them. Yeah. Like it and that at that moment, because that's still early-ish on, you think, oh my, this is now hopeless. You're thinking everyone is gonna die. Yeah. Like it is gonna be as dark as everybody warned me it would be. Yeah. This is this was the bit I was like, oh. oh. I really like the cruise plot. I really like that little thing you forgot right at the start. And then it sort of, and then you, yeah. you're like, you're going in to get killed. You're definitely going to get killed. Yeah. And then just that little thing and Cruz finally comes through and saves the day. And he actually yeah, becomes yeah, a really yeah. good character. Yeah. Um, I like Cruz. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're not all dead, it turns out, because Tarvitz warned them. And they all went and hid in underground shelters and bunkers wherever they could. And it didn't work for a lot of people. But lots of them were still alive, it turns out. Yeah. So what happens is, Angron, angry Angron of the Angry Marines, um, really doesn't like this. He's like, what? You're still alive? I hate it. And he immediately, like the minute the smoke clears, they see the World Eaters gunships coming down to finish the damn job. To which Horus is really annoyed because Horus is like, I could have just left them. There's no yeah. one left. Um, but then he gets really annoyed and he's like, right, I'm going to pretend I ordered this all along and orders everyone down to finish the job. So he orders, so Sons of Horus, Death Guard, Empress Children, and World Eaters all go down to the planet to, to kill their mates. It, yeah. I mean, and I at this point, I was thinking, but they can't do anything. They're on a dead planet. Yeah, yeah. They'll They've got nothing. Anyway. Most of them are dead. Yeah. Just go. Leave but, them alone. But they do quite well. And essentially, um, they hole up and they sort of delay the whole thing. Like, this is meant to be simple. They drag it out for, I think it's sort of weeks or months. Two, three it's months. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, of like hiding in the ruins, fortifying themselves and waves upon waves of their mates go down. And they do really well at surviving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's this basically drawn out, th the third act is this sort of section where Tarvitz, Loken are both commanding the defence mm -hmm. against waves of their own people, like um, like Lucius kills the chaplain Charmosian because he didn't like him anyway. Um, but and basically, the, the upshot is basically two things happen, right? Lucius betrays Tarvitz. Lucius gets on the court so phone badly. to Eidolon and is like, uh, but I'm a complete prick, so you should let me back in. Yeah. Uh, why am I down here? I'm one of the complete assholes in the Empress Children. <laughs> I'm like, the worst. I'm the worst. I should <laughs> definitely be on the side of the traitors. Uh, and apparently that is agreed. Yeah. Uh, I'd yeah. Um, and he cuts his face lots. That's yeah. what happens in this. Um, starts cutting his face a lot. And then Loken and Torgadden fight a Abaddon and Aximand. And they have a big old fight. And Torgadden is killed. And Loken is squished by rocks. Yeah. And that's it. All the main characters are dead apart from the Remembrancers. Everyone's dead. 
Lucius gets away. Lucius is like fine. Like a rat down a hole. Yes, because he is a model. You can play him 40k, so he can't die. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Tarvitz is dead, we think. Uh, Loken is squished by rocks. Uh, Torgadon is definitely killed. We see that his on camera. Head, his head come off. Uh, um, I don't think we see Tarvitz die on camera. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. The um, deaths just blend. And we know that Cruz, Garrow, Keela, Oloton... Will and Cinderman, and Cinderman will return in the next insta- thrilling instalment of the Horus yeah. Heresy. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. I, I, we knew, like you said, we knew this had to happen. Yeah, everyone has to die. Yeah, but after that, yeah, they then do another thing to the planet. Am I imagining this? Or no, I think you imagined. I feel like um, they did a final like blast of the planet or something. And I was just oh, they didn't, but didn't they bombard the planet at the end? They bombarded yeah. that's, because that's why Loken gets squished by rocks. It's because they start a bombardment of the planet. He, yeah. So, but firstly, you you could have just said, okay, nobody go down. Let's just bombard. Yeah. That would have saved. Well, that's lot. what Horus is like. Oh, that's what I'm going to do. And then Angron goes down. Yeah. And he's like, right, I'm going to make that look like I meant it. But that's so dumb. But then it's the saddest thing in the world because Loken loses his best mate, and then he's lying down there with his legs squished. And then he just looks up and sees, and he knows, I can't. I, I feel like to lighten the mood at this point, you should show everyone your t-shirt because I just realised it's not actually uh, on on the camera. Okay, yeah, this is the t-shirt we need to wear. So there's a cat flying through space and a unicorn, and a really nice intact planet. Yeah, a planet that isn't virus bond <laughs> or broken apart. No. So so yeah, basically <laughs> we're at the, we are now the, the the important thing about this book is. We're now at the Horus Heresy, everybody. The Horus Heresy has begun. <laughs> he's done a heresy. He's done uh, a heresy. He's evil now. Um, does his being evil make sense now? I mean, if you look at all the factors, yes. Right. He has come from a very dysfunctional family. <laughs> yes. He hasn't heard from his dad in in years yeah. of fighting for him. His brothers are really annoying. <laughs> they and, are really annoying. And vying. Yeah. And he basically goes to a completely possessed moon that's full of bad magic. It's full of goblins. Yeah. He has got Erebus in his ear. And then, you know, the minute they took his body into the snake temple, that was game over. Yeah. As far as I was concerned. Like, And, you know, I remember I did speak, you know, I did say to Graham, is he a baddie because of the warp or because he's a bastard? And Graham's like, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, the part, I I mean, I know we said in the last book it seemed a bit of a quick jump, but um, and but he had the dream where he saw all his brothers and the emperor mm-hmm. statues and not one of him. But it's just, I mean, a lot of what Horace does does not make sense in terms of <laughs> he was a war master because he was the best at strategy. Yeah, but that's really difficult to do in a book, isn't it? Because then the author has to be better at strategy than everyone reading it. Agreed. So you just have to but, be like, then he did some great strategy. We're not going to go into detail. But I know and I received that. That's true. <laughs> you know, you'd have to be like, you know, you'd have to be really good at war to, to be able to write better th- about it than anybody. But some of the decisions like allowing, you know, hundreds of thousands of troops to get killed mm. just because Angron annoyed him. And, you know, why do a virus and then a flame cloud? You could have just bombarded the whole planet. But, I mean, of course, that would have made a great story. Would have made it a soupy. But I was really surprised how sad I felt. Oh, Because... Like all locusts, Every, yeah. He's just tried to protect people. He's just trying to be nice. He was doing his job. Torgadon was doing jokes. Horace said to him, "Please tell me, I want yeah. you in my Mournival because I'm a bit going off piste. Speak the truth. Yeah, I need the remembrance. Remembrances. You know, Loken just tried to do the right thing. Um, I also was surprised. I thought there would be a moment between Euphrates and Loken. Oh uh, yeah, because. They don't really talk that much. They, it's Oloton who talks to both, uh, yeah. both the most. Yeah. And um and you really do, base, Loken doesn't know, mm. but there is a representative of the emperor, a saint, on the ship, and he never gets the benefit. He doesn't even get to we know. Think. Ooh, oh. Metaphysics. <laughs> is it really the emperor? Is it just latent psychic belief oh. power? Don't do this to me. Yeah. I can't handle this sandwich on to top. Make that video. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make that video, make that please. Video, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh. I mean, I if I'd known when you and I started book club that I would give a shit this much about a stupid space marine, yeah, yeah, and crying in front of people. Yeah, you did that on the internet. But I wondered, yeah, because. After we read it, I tried to reach Ian to, to talk to him, and Ian just didn't. Are oh, you probably skating or something? Doing something, yeah. And uh, so I I did a live chat to process it. But one of my questions is, do you, obviously I'm a very I cry all the time. People don't worry about it. But do you think other people cried, or is this just another day in the life of a black library book? If you're a Warhammer. Um. I think we should ask the watching public to comment on whether how sad they felt yeah. as everyone was souped in this. Did you cry? I did not cry. You didn't? I but didn't. did you feel sad? I or? did sort of expect them. I, I liked Cruz going. I did kind of think Loken would get out of this. I... Like there's some way Loken will get out of this. Yeah. Um, and Torgadna, I kind of prefer Torgadna as a character. But um, <laughs> but yeah, um, Torgadna's like, you've got to kill the puppy, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I know. Um, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Poor so, little tall garden. So, um, so yeah, I was, I was kind of expecting them to escape. I kind of like Tarvitz. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, I, and I, there's a bit of me that's like, okay, you know, fine, you've killed everyone because that's what's happened. And yeah, yeah, otherwise it wouldn't be horrific if all our favorite characters got away. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, the the particular way in which they're killed, though, beautifully described. Um, supening. How do you feel about a supening? Do you want to be it's souped? The supening, actually, because I was inured to a Swamp Planet zombie. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Swamp Planet zombies, that, yeah. I would rather be souped than zombied. Yeah, that's true. You agree or disagree? Yeah, 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 I think so, yeah. I mean, souped at least looks like you wouldn't have time to notice. Exactly. You'd be like, that smells funny, bleh, <laughs> That's exactly how, Sit. That's how it works. What's that smell? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just going to read the bits that made me cry. I think I'm going to oh, be okay. this is a good time? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Abaddon dismissed... So, basically, Loken and Torgan are dead. And Ab Abaddon... How do we say this again? Uh, any way you like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Abaddon... No, no. Abaddon. <laughs> Abaddon dismissed the thought and spoke into the Vox. Warmaster, he said, it's over. What have we done, Ezekiel? Whispered Aximand. What needed to be done, said Abaddon. The Warmaster ordered it and we obeyed. They were our brothers, said Aximand. And Abaddon was astonished to find tears spilling down his brother's cheeks. They were traitors to the war master. Let that be an end to it. Aximan nodded, but Abaddon could see the seed of doubt take root in his expression. Uh, the traitors within the Mournival were dead, but he'd not forgotten the look of regret he'd seen on Aximan's face. So that made me really sad. Yeah, Aximan actually is really sad about this. Yeah. yeah and it, it comes up. and It's a plot point. It Good. Yeah. Well, for Aximan, you bet. Which I like. I like the fact that there are like traitors who are like, oh, I'm not sure I was. No. this was the right choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, after killing 50,000 people. Oh, we just people. souped like a billion people. I'm glad, <laughs> Aximan, you have a chance. Try and do something good now for once in your life. And then this is really sad. So <laughs> I can see you shit. Like... <laughs> so this is really sad. So they kind of know that they, the last hundred of Tarvit's loyalists, yeah. the last hundred... And the stars shone down on the coral city in time to watch the city die. Did we hurt them, Captain? asked Solothan. Did this mean anything? Tarvitz thought for a moment before replying. Yes, he said, we hurt them here. They'll remember this. Oh. And then they get bombed to fuck. Yeah. Then yeah. Bombed to fuck. Yeah. And it's just, it's again, it's the little people that are just doing what they think is best. Yeah. But I'm really, do you know who's I'm most cross with? Who? The bloody emperor. The bloody emperor. I know the warp was down. I know the Wi Fi <laughs> went out. The Wi Fi went out. No, the emperor's busy and we'll find out why, but he is very, <laughs> I promise, he's dealing with a lot of shit right now. <laughs> okay. To be continued. The emperor. When we get to book okay, eight or nine, we'll realise the Emperor is yeah. dealing with a lot of stuff. Okay. Especially when we get to like 55. Well, That's like, yeah. Um, I, I but do. there are reasons why the Emperor isn't coming off okay. and coming out of the palace anytime soon. I won't ask you that because I don't want to be spoiled, but I do have questions. But one of the things I thought just very quickly that would happen, or I really hope happens, I hope Euphrates. Oh, shit. You, you know Euphrates was in a coma? Yeah. For a long time, I thought this is going to be like Emperor in a coma and Euphrates. Oh. And it would be like, so it'd be, you know, so there'd be that symbiosis. But actually... Now Euphrates alive, I want her to become OP. I want her oh, to Oh, you're going to be like mega powerful, she mega zord, she -ra Yeah, like, yeah. you know, Titan, you know, she can get her own Titan and go around okay, blasting right. people with holy light. But, um, yeah, so I have two questions. Okay, are only we, two questions. Are we at the questions section? We're at the question section, yeah, yeah. 
I've only got two questions because I'm so upset. Okay. But one of them was, I don't know if I didn't pick something up, but there's a reason that this system and these planets were important to Horus. It's fun. Um, was that just a false flag? Yeah, I don't know if there is any particular reason why they're important okay. other than the rebellion gives him an excuse. There's this big thing where people are questioning, why have you taken four legions to pacify this planet? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, the rebel they're rebels against the Imperium. We're going to make a point. Yeah. So the rebellion gives, the fact that it's in rebellion and it's an Imperial planet in rebellion gives him an excuse to gather all four legions there to do this. Yeah. Whereas usually people would be like, why do you need four legions? To okay, pacify a that planet. makes sense. Because I wondered, because the war singers were so realised mm. and there was a guy with like half man, half organ. Yeah. And I thought there must be something on this planet that they, another evil weapon. Yeah. But yeah. that didn't come out. And then there's there's a bit on um on page 261 and it's describing how quickly the virus spread. Mm. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly read it. The virus spread through the civilian populace of Isfahan 3 at the speed of thought, leaving from victim to victim, leaping from victim to victim in the time it took to breathe in its foul contagion. People dropped where they stood, the flesh slamming from their skeletons as their nervous systems collapsed and their bones turned to the consistency of jelly. But it goes more gross, it, more gross. And then it goes, entire kingdoms and vassal states across the surface were obliterated in minutes. Ancient cultures that had survived old night and endured the horror of invasion a dozen times over fell without even knowing why, millions dying in screaming agony as their bodies betrayed them and fell apart, reducing them to rotted, decaying matter. Yeah, uh, maybe I will maybe I will choose the Nurgle Swamp. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, but what ancient cultures that had survived old night? Yeah, so old night is the age of strife, which is what there was like there's this before the Emperor rises, there's this bit where there's warp storms across the galaxy for 5,000 years. So after the Iron Men, after all that, yeah. we don't know what happened back then too long ago. Then there's 5,000 years of, of the Age of Strife, which is called Old Night. And it's called that because it, the, the, you couldn't get anywhere. The galaxy was dark. Your warp yeah. was dark. You couldn't go anywhere. And that's why there's so many of these human empires left that now think they're the only humans or don't remember oh. or things like that. It's because they would have all been in contact like 5,000 years ago, but then the warp storms rose up and they were all cut off. And on mm. some planets, they remember terror and some planets, they just don't. No. And some planets have regressed to, to yeah. tribal stuff or got corrupted by chaos. Um, and so there's all these civilizations all across the galaxy of yeah. humans that have been building up for, yeah, 25,000 years. And then they all get isolated from each other. And the Emperor's Rise is, he he rises just as, he basically knows that the warp storms are going to clear. And so he, oh. he, he, he goes, right, I've got a plan. When these warp storms clear, we are going to be the first out of the gate. And it's a oh. rush before all the aliens realise. Yeah. And before chaos realizes, when 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 those warp storms clear, we're gonna have twenty legions of space marines and our armada of fucking ships, and we're gonna go and forcibly <laughs> reunite all the humans yeah. before they have a chance to do anything else. Wow, who has the energy? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, wow. So that's that that's old, old night. night is old night is the name for the age of strife, and it's this whole thing. There's a great plot line in one of the other books where one of the characters is a historian, and he's like, my main goal is we don't know why old night happened. Okay. Can, what? Why did old night happen? Shouldn't yeah. we try and know that? Yeah, I um, think we should. I want to know. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows. But uh, well, uh, it's because of the Eldar. I'm excited. Fucking we elves. haven't read any Eldar stuff. No, we haven't. We Maybe need we to read an Eldar thing. Yeah, we need to read um, about Perturbo. No, Perturbo. We need, we need to read about Ultramarines. We need to read about Eldar. Perturabo. It's an Alistair Crowley reference. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a Crowley reference, yeah. Um, Perturabo. Perturabo. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, we have questions from humans. Okay. Ready for these questions from humans? Okay. What are Mira's predictions for those characters that managed to survive the trilogy? I've kind You've of, done a bit of that. I kind of said this. I want Euphrates to get She-Ra superpowered. Right. I want, I want the loyalists to become really strong. Right. So it doesn't feel completely hopeless. Ah! <laughs> I want, yeah, I I basically want there to be patches of the universe where you can hide from horrors. Oh, yeah, that exists, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think Loken should come back in a dream or something. Or, you know, there should be a Loken baby somewhere. A baby Loken? Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Euphrates has to carry it around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. We're going to go for... <laughs> <laughs> Euphrates becomes a badass and teams up with a baby Loken. Yeah. Okay. And there, and there should be more Titans. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> and more more Xenos. Right. More Xenos in the Horus Heresy. There's not Heresy. a lot of Xenos in the Horus Heresy because it's mostly about a civil war between humans. 
Yeah. 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 Um, unknown email, which is a name, says <laughs> Galaxy and Flames. Right. First off, I'd like to apologise to Mira for this book introducing her to virus bombs. Um, which of the non Primark space marines you've seen so far, who would you fuck, marry, kill? <laughs> <laughs> so fuck, marry, kill non Primark space marines so far. Our options are the Mornival. Why can't I be with a Primark? Am I not good enough? You can't be with Am a Primark. Am I not good enough? The Mornival, you've got Tarvitz, Lucius, Garrow, and Khan. Can I kill Erebus? Oh, an Erebus. Yeah, you can kill Erebus. Kill him. Yeah. Marry? Who am I going to marry? Saul or Loken? Okay, yeah, all right. And fuck? Um... Space Marines can't do that. Yeah, but they can't no, do but that. If they could... Um, if I had to spend a romantic night with them, <laughs> Little Horace. Little Horace? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because he might be good. <laughs> but I don't really want to spend the night. I would rather spend a night with a Tau or an Eldar. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you get a cup um, of tea in the morning. Uh, oh, apparently tea. we can replace... You could get a cup of tea. Uh, yeah. Uh, replace, We're both excited uh, about the tea. F with date if that's more appropriate. Yeah, I, no, yeah I, I do like to be appropriate. I'm very... Um, a bit prudish on the internet, so yeah. All right, well, finally, of all the characters you've seen so far, who would you like to see more of and who have you had your fill of? Who do you never need to see again? Wow. The thing is, they're all either really... I, there's none I never want to see again because they're all so interestingly awful <laughs> or virtuous. Um, <laughs> interestingly awful. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I want to know more about all the Primarchs. Because obviously anyone with superpowers is kind of like amazing and interesting. Um, Lucius, I could do without. He's a bit yeah, much. Yeah, he's a bit much, isn't he? he? You take him to a party, he's yeah, showing he'd off, he'd he's embarrassed. Yeah. He'd, be so, he'd offend everybody. Like, yeah. Lucius, no. Oh. But Euphrates and Cinderman, I love everybody in that ship. I, I'm going to be devastated when they get Oh, killed. yeah, good point. Hold on. Yeah, those are options, aren't they? Cinderman reminds me of. Me, because like nervous yeah, librarian. Um, Euphrates, I think, is. Can't marry Euphrates, too religious. <laughs> You'd have to go to temple all the time. Yeah. You'd have to worship the emperor every yeah. day. Yeah. But Mercedes the Oliton, she's yeah. a good egg. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, but fuck or marry. You, Obviously, we'd kill Arabus. Ian or is Lucius. never going to get married. Just. Yes, good point. Anyone fanboying. Um, so, so. <laughs> What, Mercedes, one of those two. Yeah. And I don't know who is the last one. Uh, I tell you what, who I don't want to see again. Old bodyguard. Old body Magard. Magard. Yeah. Magard. Horrible. Horrible. Mary Cruz. Oh, yeah. Fuck Sadie, Mary Cruz, <laughs> kill Erebus, obviously. Well done. But I'm really looking forward to those, to those survivors. And thank the Emperor that they were saved. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> the Emperor. Praise the Emperor. <laughs> because um, if definitely I think... the Emperor. <laughs> it's not doing the thing, but I think if if that had not happened, if we had, you know, it's like when the Cylons killed all of Earth, but mm. a ragtag group got away. I don't I remember that. It would be so much harder because there's no hope at the moment. It is. I am now. This is Mira fully grimdarked. Well, I've skipped over James's question because it has spoilers. So I'm going to David's David's question, which is how well characterized are the traitors in the Horus Heresy so far? Are there any traitors whose motivations Mira can sympathize with? Apart from Horus, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like with some, they're evil from the get-go because we know that's how they end up. But with others, I found myself much more invested in why they fall to the dark side. Uh, why are these questions all for me? This is know, mad, isn't it? You're the, you're the right. one that knows the well, things. Well, I think Axeman's quite a good choice because he's he's a bit regretful about it, yeah. which is quite nice. I think, yeah. I Khan agree. is really interesting. We haven't really seen him much yet, mm. but he has quite a good story. Yeah, I, I think the Emperor's Children, I thought... I mean, obviously, Quipster kind of basically did like a three minute, please, the Emperor's children are nice. <laughs> um, but that relationship between Tarvitz and Lucius, I, yeah. that was, you know, and Lucius, somebody who's cutting their own face up is not OK and they don't have enough self-love. So I felt for his... I, mean, I would argue Lucius has had too much. way too much self-love. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting the way that H Horace uh, made Fulgrim fall to him yeah, yeah i was yeah. really interested i thought that would be way less complicated so i'm interested in fulgrim mm -hmm. um that's book five i know everyone's excited for book yeah. five aren't they but um i i can't the more like i i just couldn't when that was happening but 
there's that grain of hope with Aximons being mm. like, what do, what have we done? I, I am interested in all of them. I'm, but it's it, like, I didn't expect to feel emotional. So, you know, when yeah. you have a bad breakup, yeah. it takes you like a month or two to kind of sort out your emotions yeah. from the confusion. So, well, I'm glad. See, if Ben, T ben Counter had been here, I'm yeah. sure he'd be glad to hear all that. I hope so. I think he's done. I think he had a, the three of those authors, Dan, Graham and Ben, who, you know, the high lords of terror. I think that, I don't care what anyone says. I know some people are like, oh, I don't like this one. I don't like that. I think they have done such a beautiful job because they they each of them has pulled on little, little bits mm -hmm. from other books. So I think that is also quite a nice, hopeful thing, people working together. It's also a good place to end because, of course, the next book is the one that is the most like that. It's the one that, like, it is, it is this story from a different point of view yeah. and then has a different ending. So we're going to meet a load more new people yeah. in the next one. Um, and, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. So Flight of the Eisenstein next. But before we go, yeah. because Ian did try and keep me away from this to protect me. Yeah, I was right. You were right. <laughs> so, Ian, we shouldn't have done this. And, <laughs> And I completely, and it's like, I understand now, you were right, you know me very well, but are you happy? How do you feel that we're doing the Horus Heresy? I'm glad we're doing the Horus Heresy now. Yeah, I, I, like uh, it's nice to, to reread them. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's been really enjoying to reread them. There are some coming up that I'm not particularly excited about rereading. Um, there are some that I've already read where I was like, no, oh, I didn't know. Now I remember why I didn't like that one the first time around. Oh. So it's interesting to reread them, um, mostly because I just haven't done it for ages and it clarifies things. Uh, so I'm enjoying it. Okay. I'm enjoying it. Uh, there's I'm a few books ahead of you and there is one already that I'm like, ah, uh, oh, I remember this book. Well, we'll, um, we'll throw in we'll, a we'll, gaunt. Yeah. We're throwing some gaunts. We're throwing some voted ones. Um, but yeah, so thank you for joining us for Galaxy and Flames. We are done. Um, our pluggables and balloobalables will be down in the thing um, on whichever channel you're reading this, watching this, listening to this. You're not reading it. That's not how this works. <laughs> we do the reading. Anyway, um, yeah. So join us next time. We will be doing Flight of the Eisenstein. And uh, we have many other books for you to yeah. uh, watch us get confused about. Yay, um, come join us. Cool. See you next time. Bye. Bye.